Hello, everyone. This is State Rep Noreen Kokoruda. Wanted to reach out to you today to just talk to you about a, a really important department and service in our community here in Madison. I'm with today with uh, Austin Hall. He's our Director of uh, Senior Services and the Senior Center here in Madison. Welcome, Austin. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me, Noreen. Appreciate it. I know you're doing a lot of good work now. I know how busy you are, but I, I wanted to give people who don't know because you know, your, your um, population is, changes because people become a senior, you know, on a daily basis, our numbers are being added to. I know the numbers are growing. So could we just start with you giving just a quick overview of, of what this is, Senior Center and Senior Services does in the state of, I mean, in the town of Madison? Sure. So um, we have a, a beautiful building located on Bradley Road, downtown Madison, uh, where we do a number of things. Uh, we offer social services, so Medicare, Medicaid counseling, um, applications for all state and local tax relief programs, um, other state and local benefit programs, um, SNAP applications, so any, any state or local social service um, opportunity, we can help you uh, along the way to apply and gather paperwork and do that such thing. Uh, we also offer programming like all senior centers do. We offer exercise programming. We offer trips to all over Connecticut. We offer trips abroad. We offer trips throughout the United States. Um, many different types of exercise programs, uh, both uh, seated exercise. We offer um, Tai Chi, meditation, boot camps for folks who want to get at it a little more harder than a chair exercise. Um, tai Chi, meditation, we offer um, dance classes. So every sort of educational program that you could think of too. Um, we recently have a program about uh, American history. Um, so any, all the sort of um, typical senior center activities that, that you would see. Um, many, many different types of card games and, and social activities uh, from duplicate bridge, regular bridge, mahjong, rummy cube, um, and that happens all day, every day at the senior center. Uh, we also have a, a very large lunch program here, um, which is a little different than most senior centers. We have uh, a chef and kitchen staff that prepare meals uh, Monday through Friday for folks in our dining room. And we cook for about 40 to 50 people Monday through Friday in the dining room. And we also offer meals on wheels through my department as well. So um, that's another 80 or so meals. So we do about 120 meals a day during the normal time uh, with 40 or 50 in-house and then 80 meals on wheels. Um, and Meals on Wheels is a great program, not only for a healthy meal for a senior or a disabled Madison resident, but it also acts as a welfare check. So when we have our drivers go and deliver, they have to put eyes on the person. So sometimes these people don't, don't see anyone all day. They're really the most vulnerable folks in town. So having someone see them say hello, ask how you're doing, and then those volunteers report back to us um, about how that person was, if they needed anything. So it's, it acts not only as a meal, but a welfare check and a social visit. It's really important. We have some great volunteers that, um, that do that for us and deliver the meals and we make them here through our chef. And uh, we're, that's something we're, we're very proud of, just getting food, a hot meal that's more than just a hot meal. It's a know a chef prepared meal to folks who you know can't cook or shouldn't cook or you know could really use that hot meal and uh, that's something we're, we're very proud of and, and like to talk about. Well I have to say as a senior myself I've um, definitely taken um, the opportunity to go over and have lunch and you're right the food is great and and I noticed the numbers seem to keep growing and you know, you bring it up an important issue with seniors that are here all the time. And obviously with the pandemic, we'll talk about it more, but the whole iso isolation factor. I've spoken to people at the senior center that that luncheon that they're at is just about 
the only people they've spoken to that day, the only interaction they've had. And, um, and I've watched this Meals on Wheels program grow. Um, and it's interesting to hear what you say about the welfare check because um, there are some people that are homebound that really don't have connection to the community. And I, um, your, your chairman of your commission, Dr. Cairns, once said to me, for every person we've reached, reached out to, every person that we've connected with, there's two or three more that we don't know about yet. And I heard that years ago, Austin, and if there's anything I think your department has done and your service have done is you've done, you're, you're getting, you're working on that. And I know the number is not perfect, but it's so much better than it was. And I, I can't tell people enough how important this is in our community. Um, you know, I have friends that go over there for Mahjong and Canasta, I've done it myself. Um, but this whole service part of our community, which, which is beyond the senior center, I think more people have to know about. So I encourage people to join the senior services, senior center. Um, there's transportation, which is great. I think transportation is a big issue for seniors, as you know. With your transportation program, um, pre-COVID, um, uh, what services did you provide with your transportation? So pre-COVID, we did so two types of transportation. One is just regular transportation to and from the senior center. So if you wanted to come for lunch or an activity, we would pick you up right at your home and bring you here. We also did grocery shopping twice a week. So we'd go to Stop and Shop on Tuesdays and Thursdays twice during each of those days. Um, so pick you up at your home, bring you to Stop and Shop, and then take you back home with your groceries. And then we also run a Dial-A-Ride program, which is um, typically medical transportation, but can be used for anything. So if you have a doctor's appointment, say at Yale New Haven Hospital, we will pick you up at your house, um, say a half an hour before your appointment, get you there on time, and then wait for you there. So you're not waiting once you get out of the doctor um, for a long time to get back. And that's, you know, we're proud of our lunch program and our activities here, but the transportation truly is, um, fantastic because it allows you to continue to be a part of the community and and get to the the doctors that you need to get to for free and um you know it's it's important to not make people wait as well um getting um sorry making sure that people don't have a long wait time uh, after their doctor's appointment going to the doctor is already a difficult task for a lot of people but having to wait to come back home or wait a long time when you get there that that's not right so we try to get people to and from there on a, in a timely fashion uh, and we go from madison all the way to the va in west haven and we go to middletown um, north haven Brantford, east haven guilford clinton pretty much anywhere you have a doctor's appointment we'll be able to take you and it's free and the vehicles are all uh, handicapped accessible so if you're in a wheelchair um you can still take the transportation if you can't negotiate stairs you could still take the transportation because we use the wheelchair lift to get you on there um so it really helps folks um who say may not have um may have given up their license or given up driving we could still keep them part of the community keep them active and get them to where they have to go so they don't um, feel like they're isolated at home really important you know stuff. You know, Austin, years ago, when I was a selectman, we did a survey and the, sur the intent of the survey was to show how much we really needed a senior center. And um, the biggest surprise, I mean, obviously it came out that people really wanted a, a hub, a hub to go. But the biggest surprise was the number one desire on this survey came with transportation. It was quite an eye opener. And I know, um, how many buses do you have and how many drivers do you have um, um, on a weekly basis? So we have we have uh, three buses and three drivers. Um, you know they're all all part time and you know do different things. One driver that strictly does the dial ride, um, which is important too. When you know that if you have an appointment and you know that this particular driver is going to be the one that will come and pick you up, you build these relationships and trust with folks um, over time. That that is important to not only them but us. Um, so they you know they come to be aware of that they can trust our drivers and know the, the type of service that, that we're offering. But it, it's, it's very important. Our, our vehicles are, you know, uh, important to have, um, especially the wheelchair lifts to get people up who, 
you know, it's difficult to get in and out of a car a little and get out of a bus. So to be able to use the wheelchair lift to get folks on, on the bus is important. You know, um, I'm so glad to see you growing that because it is so important. And, and I think between the regular bus and the dollar ride, um, you really, really do service a lot of people. I wanted to really talk to you today about what does senior services look like today during the pandemic? I mean, I know you're not fully open yet and on, we'll discuss that later, but um, what, what, do, what is your staff doing? What, what do you look like today? So this pandemic really made us do a 180 on how we approach senior services. So our whole goal all the time is how to engage with folks, how to get them out of their house, how to get them to the senior center, keep them engaged with the community, um, prevent isolation, and you know make it so folks aren't at home all the time. Now in the pandemic, it's the complete opposite of that. We are encouraging people to stay home, um, stay safe, isolate socially. So we had to get creative in our programming and how we engage with folks uh, during this time. So it's, you know, goes totally against what, what our, our mission is. Um, but, you know, you have to pivot and, and be creative when things like this come up. So um, right from the bat, we started a program called Errands on Wheels. So we offer Meals on Wheels. And now there's folks who typically would be out and about grocery shopping on their own, going to CVS to get their prescription. And, you know, we encourage them not to do that, not to go to the grocery store and not to go out into stores where it's hard to social isolate. So we came up with a program called Errands on Wheels where we gathered volunteers to go grocery shopping for folks, run to the pharmacy to do errands, go to uh, rings and lumber to pick up just essential things that people needed and we did over 40 different seniors um, participate in the program and it worked seamlessly um, one thing madison has has great of his volunteers um, there's no lack of volunteers in in madison and these folks really stepped up to help um, seniors stay safe and at home um, and they, the seniors who participated really benefited from having folks go to the grocery store. Cause you know, right in, you know, March, April, May, you know, you were really right. told, you know, stay home. People didn't know a lot of misinformation. Um, so this helped folks, you know, really be able to stay as safe as they could in their homes while still getting the food and nutrition and pharmacy pickups that they needed. Um, really important. And um, you know, we couldn't have done it without the volunteers that we had. And so is we that program really still going on, Austin? Is that program still going on? Still going on, yeah. Yep, still going on. We've done, I think, over 250 shopping trips so wow. far, which is a lot. And, um, you know, it, it, it means a lot to be able to offer programs like that because um, we're just, we're helping the community. And the community is really behind us and helps. We, we, we had enough volunteers where we didn't, weren't even able to use all the volunteers. That's how many we have. Um, we also started a pen pal program, which really took off. Um, it got picked up um, crazy enough by like um, Better Homes and Gardens magazine and a few other nationwide um, online magazines. Martha Stewart new magazine picked it up. So it went all over the country and we had people from all over the country submitting applications to be a pen pal. And um, we tried to keep it very local. So we tried to just use Madison um, seniors and Madison students from the school system. Um, so we put a bunch of them together and they corresponded by email. And some of them have formed these tremendous bonds and relationships with each other and um, are still corresponding uh, to this day. And um, it was just a way for students to, who were home, being schooled at home, and seniors who were home trying to stay safe, to interact with each other, share their experiences and um, what the pandemic was, was doing to them, what it meant to them, and then just 
a friendly conversation um, outside of the pandemic was important too. And is that program, um, are you still looking for volunteers, Austin, or is that, you're really, where's that stand? No, we're, we're pretty much, pretty much full with that. Yeah, okay. we had so much of a response that, um, that we've had other senior centers and um, huge um, senior living facilities in Florida contacted us. Um, it was, it was pretty neat to see how, how uh, far reaching that, that program was. You know, it was um, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you today, Austin, because there's a lot going on there. And I think um, even people like me who pays attention wasn't aware of all the programs. I know when the pandemic first started, um, you were sort of the drop off place if anybody wanted to donate anything. Um, how, what is, how does that stand? So we still do that. We still um, have a bin outside where we take food pantry donations every day. And at last count, last month, I think we did almost 2,000 pounds of, of donated non-perishable food items. Um, wow. So a ton, a ton of food went to um, the Madison Food Pantry, which helped out, you know, 100 or so families who um, go to the food pantry every week. Um, that, you know, that's another thing. Madison is great, not only at volunteering, but helping uh, your fellow resident. Um, we don't we don't lack for for help in town here. That's for sure. You know, I think um, I think that's one of the part parts of the reason we all want to live in one like like Madison. Um, you know, I know that farm to family program that you and I connected to, and we were able to get you some fresh produce. I know it's going to continue. I'm I'm hoping you're going to get more on Friday. But there's the federal government, you know, pushing to help farmers. And now we've been able to actually connect with local farmers, which is really great. And they're being paid for the produce, keeping, you know, helping them get through this time. And, and also we're getting, um, I didn't know if you had a chance to look in those boxes, but they were pretty cool what they were sending. And to think that a senior, a senior couple or a senior individual would get a box like that or, or somebody who's disabled, a box like that every week, at least through September. And I just can imagine. Um, you know, I think one of the things with uh, this pandemic is it does bring out the best in people. And, and I think you've been able to, you and your staff have been able to corral this to really make a difference in the community. You know, I think the biggest problem now is letting people know, and we're in our sixth month with this, and it's, it's, um, it's trying for people that don't normally need help. And um, I spoke to a person this week, and I know I've mentioned to you, he's just never had to reach out, he and his wife before. They never knew they could ask for help. And, and it's not the financial concerns, it's that they, just what you said, they need to stay home. And um, to know that all these services are available, all this help is available, and that volunteers, their community neighbors want to do it for them. I think you bringing that together has been so important. I hope we could get the word out even more that people need to just reach out to the senior services, especially if they're over what age? 65, is it 65? Six, yeah, 60, 65, we won't, we won't uh, check ID. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but then I know, uh, you know, there obviously we also have a social service program too with youth, youth and family services. Right. But people need to know this isn't just for the needy. This is for everyone. This is for the community to step up, keep our seniors, which is 26% of our population, safe. And, um, and if they don't have family members that can shop for them or, or get a prescription or get them you know, get them to wherever they have to go as far as errands, um, you, you folks are stepping up. I know um, one of the things that we've been talking about is telehealth, and hopefully that's helping seniors. Do seniors talk to you about that at all? Because I know a lot of them cannot go to their doctors. Yeah, so we're offering um, a lot of Zoom programming now. So Zoom exercise, knitting, educational lectures, and Tai Chi and meditation, but we also offer a Zoom 101 to teach folks how to do it so they can do telehealth and, and not only telehealth, but interact with family members and um, friends. We have folks who do Zoom meetings with just each other and they play cards with each other over Zoom. Um, that technology is really important. And there's folks who are Zooming now that have never done anything with technology before. And it's such a simple application um, that brings together you know, dozens of people at a time and allows you to meet with your doctor over the, in a safe connection and to be able to do it from the, the comforts of your home is, is important. So we're teaching folks how to do that. Um, so if they've 
folks have seniors have just gotten an iPad from a family member and they just have an iPad. They don't know what to do with it. So they, we do the programs here to, to show them what to do, how to set it up and um, get, get zooming. Yeah, it's important. Wait, would they just go online to, con to connect with that, to take zoom one-on-one? How would they do that? So we have a newsletter that goes out to 1700 people or so every month. Um, it's also located on our, our website, madisonct.org slash seniors, um, and it's on the, the town website as well. We also send out an email blast of our newsletter, so anywhere they can get it. If they call here, we'll email it to them, or they can pick up a hard copy of the newsletter as well. That's great. You know, and I, I want to end this with, uh, first of all, besides thanking you, and we will put all this contact information, thanking you and your staff for all the great work you're doing. We really want to make Madison's people, seniors and everyone, aware of all that's out there to help them. Nobody has to be in this alone. Um, but I want to end it with what you think and what you're hearing about as far as any kind of modified reopening or anything of the center. So there's a lot of different um, viewpoints. So I'm on the um, Connecticut um, Senior Center personnel um, board. And there's a lot of senior centers that are um, not opening till January. There's some that are thinking October. Um, you know, we're still waiting on some guidance from the state. It's, it's gonna be left up to the town to decide when it's safe to reopen. Um, but we are taking the proper steps to um, follow all the guidelines. Uh, for instance, we put up a, plexiglass barrier in front of our front desk. So just as you see at Stop and Shop or any of the stores you go to, when you're interacting with our front desk personnel, you'll have a plexiglass barrier. We've installed paper towel dispensers and instead of the air hand dryers in our bathrooms, we have Purell dispensers throughout the building. <laughs> and we also have a secure mailbox outside now um, where you could drop off paperwork. So um, we're doing a lot of um, handling of paperwork and applications by the mail, so you can come and drop it off here. We'll fill it all out and help you do it, leave it for you to sign, and it's all in a secure mailbox. Um, so we're, we're taking the proper precautions. It'll be, it'll be different when we do reopen, because uh, some things lend themselves more to social distancing than others. So card games and you know, bridge and such really don't lend themselves to social distancing, but exercise does and lectures do. Um, so having um, a couple of our bigger rooms with chairs set out socially distanced properly, um, we'll be able to do, you know, some programming. Um, but it'll be a slow, methodical reopening um, just to ensure, you know, that we are doing it correctly and keeping people safe while still letting them participate. So in terms of a, a time frame, though, I really don't know. Uh, I don't think anybody knows when is going to be the right time. Uh, we're still in, in phase two. Um, so typically we thought phase three would be the time when, when we would reopen. Um, but when that's going to be, I really don't know. I don't want to give a date uh, right. to get anyone's hopes up. Um, but I would say within the next few few months, we'll um, reopen the doors slowly, methodically, and, and really thought out and, and keeping folks safe while they're here. Well, Austin, it seems like you're preparing for it. I know just like with our schools, it'll be a local decision. And I know uh, you and your staff will be ready to make the help make that decision, be part of that decision. So I want to thank you today. I just want people to know what's offered because of the, our senior services. What a great program you have. And it's not just the center, it goes way beyond it. Reach out to, to uh, Austin and, and the senior um, staff will have all the contact information at the end of this. Austin, thank you so much for being so passionate about serving our, um, this very vulnerable population. And uh, you're doing a great job. I wanna thank you, I wanna thank everyone that works with you. And a big shout out to the volunteers. Um, let's keep it up. We're, we've weathered this, beginning of this pretty well. Let's, we're gonna keep it up in. Thank you for all this information today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Lorraine. I appreciate you having me. Thank you for all of the support you've given us over the years as well.
Well, we look forward to continuing that work. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Um, and like I said, look at the end of this video, get some contact information, reach out for you or a family member that could use these services. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you.